the National Council of Supervisors of Mathematics, NCSM, Leadership in Mathematics podcast. NCSM is an organization supporting mathematics education leadership at the school, district, college, university, state, province, and national levels. Its membership constitutes an international force collaborating to achieve excellence in mathematics education. This podcast is a reading of the fifth position paper published in spring 2009, Improving Student Achievement in Mathematics by Leading Highly Effective Assessment Practices. This paper emphasizes the need to balance assessment for learning with the assessment of learning. Adult collaboration that clarifies what students should learn, how their learning will be assessed, and what the evidence of learning reveals occurs frequently and regularly in order to promote equity and reduce bias. You can download this paper in its entirety from the NCSM website. Click www.mathedleadership.org. Click Leadership Resources and look for the position papers. This paper is read by mathematics teacher Scott Oliver. NCSM position paper. Improving student achievement by leading highly effective assessment practices. Quote, the teaching profession is a calling, a calling with the potential to do enormous good for students. Although we haven't traditionally seen it in this light, assessment plays an indispensable role in fulfilling our calling. Used with skill, assessment can motivate the unmotivated, restore the desire to learn, and encourage students to keep learning. And it can actually create, not simply measure, increased achievement. From Stiggins, Ardor, Chappie and Chappie, 2006, page 3. Our position. It is the position of NCSM that assessment is a multifaceted process by which we gather information about students, teachers, schools, and school districts to provide formative opportunities to learn, adjust instruction and lesson planning, inform decision making, and monitor progress and effectiveness. In order to promote and support changes in classroom practices that ensure all students are learning, teachers must balance assessment for learning used to form instructional decisions and monitor student progress with assessment of learning, used to evaluate students' progress and achievement, assign grades, and appraise programs. Of utmost imp importance is the imperative for adult collaboration and the development of assessments and the reflection on the results of assessment. For far too long, assessment practices have been a primary creator of inequity, sorting out students due to the isolated decision-making and inconsistent learning ex expectations. When school mathematics education leaders engage teacher teams in a collaborative process that establishes what students are to learn, how their learning will be assessed, and what the evidence of learning reveals, they promote the clarity and the consistency in purpose and implementation that is necessary to reduce bias. Consequently, leaders expand their own assessment skill set and achieve a greater chance of equity for students. Equitable student learning experiences can occur only when teacher collaboration trumps the student assessment inequities created by teacher isolation and failure to plan, teach, and assess using research-informed best assessment practices. How will we know our students are learning must become a leadership question that is answered in the collaborative. Thus, assessment for learning, or formative assessment, occurs when teams of teachers and leaders collaboratively and independently use classroom assessments and other information sources about student achievement. Thus, formative assessment engages teachers and leaders for dual purposes, to advance student reflection and learning and to impact future teacher lesson planning and design. Assessment of learning, or summative assessment, occurs when teams of teachers or leaders use quality classroom assessments to assign grades, use school and district achievement data to evaluate student performance over time, and ensure tight alignment between local, district, and state or provi provincial assessment expectations. In both cases, assessment is used to answer a critical question, what evidence do we have that our students are learning? Research that supports our position. Quote, evidence from a broad concurrence of the research community points to proven structures and practices that make an immediate difference in achievement. They, the practices, begin when a group of teachers meets regularly to identify essential and valued learning, develop common formative assessments, analyze current levels of achievement, 
set achievement goals, and then share and create lessons and strategies to improve upon these levels of results. Uh, Schmoker, 2005. The mathematics that is taught must be deliberately and coherently aligned with the way it is taught and how it is assessed across grade levels and courses. Classroom student as assessments must have consistent levels of rigor across teachers and be used and interpreted with shared expectations throughout the school. Common assessments and scoring rubrics that are collaboratively developed within teacher teams should be used to not only diagnose student progress, but to form student and teacher learning as an expected practice in the school culture, from Reeves, 2006. Classroom assessments that serve as meaningful sources of information should not surprise students. Instead, these assessments must be well-aligned extensions of the teacher's instructional activities, Glusky, 2007. Ultimately, Locally developed mathematics classroom assessments must be aligned with provincial, state, or district standards. Student cannot, students cannot be prepared for larger scale state or national assessments without the proper formative feedback, preparation, and con confidence necessary to perform well. In addition, teachers' regular use of formative assessment processes improves student achievement and learning, especially when teachers use assessment results to inform and revise instructional planning and design from National Mathematics Advisory Panel 2008, page 41. Teacher teams engage in, quote, assessment for learning, unquote, activities when they respond to the question, how can we use the assessment process to cause students to learn more, increase their achievement in the future, and impact their own instructional design and delivery? Formative assessment views all forms of assessment as a means and not as an end. Formative assessments include not only quizzes and tests, but also student solutions, questions, body language, and errors. Every summative moment gets used for a formative purpose. According to Dylan William, 2007, so the big idea of formative assessment is that evidence about student learning is used to adjust instruction to better meet student needs. In other words, teaching is adaptive to the student learning needs and assessment is done in real time. More explicitly formative assessment is students and teachers using evidence of learning to adapt teaching and learning to meet immediate learning needs minute by minute and day by day. Students and teachers share the responsibility for successful implementation of formative assessment practices. Students who understand learning targets can reflect on their individual progress towards that target. Students can establish learning goals and actions that they will take in order to reach the targets. Teachers support students' progress by using effective feedback. Banger, Drowns, Kulik, Kulik, and Morgan, 1991, conducted a meta-analysis that concluded that only indicating to students whether or not their answers were correct had a negative effect on learning as compared to the increased achievement gained by asking students to refine their work or discover their errors. Leading assessment experts, including Black, Marzano, Popham, Reeves, and Stiggins, agree that frequent short assessments over periods of time reveal a better picture of a student's learning as compared to a mid-chapter and end-of-chapter test. Ehrenberg, Brewer, Gamerin, and Wilms, 2001, report that the impact of assessments for learning on student achievement is four to five times greater than reducing class size. The true value of assessment is its ability to help educators make accurate and timely inferences about student progress so that they can modify instruction accordingly. Ainsworth from 2007. During the next decade, the primary task of the mathematics education leader will be to balance the dual purposes of assessment and accountability, example grades, with accountability for learning. Research from Stiggins and Bridgeford and others found that the summative evaluation function of assessment has been too dominant and that more emphasis should be given to the potential to assist student and teacher learning from 1985. Two decades later, summative assessment as a primary purpose still prevails. It is up to the mathematics education leader to shift the emphasis on these dual purposes. How NCSM members can implement our position. As leaders, NCSM members must act to recognize the importance and impact of the skillful use of assessment on teacher practice and, st and student learning. Highly effective, collaboratively developed assessments will create greater equity through the consistency and rigor 
as student assessments are aligned with curriculum and instructional planning. More specifically, NCS members must engage teachers and teacher teams in collaborative discussions and actions to increase the use and types of assessments for learning to uh, build student competence in themselves as learners, Two, focus on the con coherency and consistency of the grading criteria and accountability used for individual and team summative assessment purposes. Three, implement assessment practices and policies as a means of instructional planning and improvement. This includes, but is not limited, to helping teachers become competent masters of the standards that students are to master, Deconstruct each standard into achievement targets that help students master the standard and share the targets with students from the beginning of the learning using clearly defined terms and accessible language. Create high quality assessments that reflect those targets. Use those assessments in collaboration with other teachers with students to track improvement over time from Stiggins 2007. Four, use formative assessment process on data from summative assessments to improve student learning through ongoing student feedback regarding criteria for success. Five, translate classroom assessment results into frequent, descriptive versus judgmental feedback for students, providing them with specific insights regarding their strengths as well as how to improve, Prime 2008. Adjust instruction continuously based on the results of formative and summative assessments. Again, Prime 2008. Seven, evaluate local assessment quality and ensure the alignment with state and national curriculum recommendations. Eight, utilize local district benchmarks to provide formative feedback loops to the teacher team as well as to the students. Nine, use district, state, or provincial summative data as an integral part of the total analysis of student learning and mathematics program decisions. Ultimately, our assessment policies and practices must reflect our beliefs about the ability of all students to succeed in mathematics. Our ongoing leadership assessment action should reflect on what we most value, the use of feedback to improve teacher instruction and student learning. For additional insight into leading through effective assessment, NCSM recommends that mathematics leaders study and apply the principles and indicators discussed in the Prime 2008 Leadership Framework listed in the bibliography. Be sure to tune in to our next podcast, position paper number six, Improving Student Achievement in Mathematics by Addressing the Needs of English Language Learners.